All black men strive for three things, power, money, intimacy. These are the three things that make a black man feel that his existence is worth living. It's time for a new story. One way you're successful. One way you're working towards your goals every day, conquering and reaching your ultimate goal. Superman Alpha is here to facilitate this process. It's time to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Superman Alpha Masculine and Health Development. I am your host, Master Nitro Cab, and it is a beautiful morning. Beautiful day. Uh, how do we say it in Spanish? We would say, Bonita, what is it? Dia, hoy dia. Bonita hoy dia. Bonita hoy dia. I believe that's a beautiful day. Yeah, bonita, bonito is masculine. Bonita hoy dia. Or hoy dia bonita. Anyway, bonjour, uh, buenos dias. Right? So anyway, today what I wanted to share with you is, be, is the aspect of why I wrote this book. This book is called The Healthy Bahamian Way Business Health Relationship Blueprint. Now, with that being said, I got a question for you. All right. What are the top three problems do you see in your country? Can you answer that? If you can, then good. Now, the question is, what are the solutions to the top three problems that you face in your country? Okay, now, the reason why I wrote this book is because I saw that Bahamians at large had a few problems that were stopping their progression as a people. We're now celebrating 47th years of independence. Now, independence would have mean that we have, would have gotten the ability to control more of our society. But even though we got independence, we did not become independent. And we say that because inside our behavior society, there are top three problems that we see. First problem unhealthy behemoths. If you look around, we see that majority of the behemoths are overweight and obese. And why is this a problem? Well, being overweight and obese tend to lead to what we call communicable diseases. Diseases that shorten the, the behemoth experience or limit it. You know? uh, many behemoths suffer from kidney failure, which is also known as renal failure, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and diabetes is a huge one. We have young children from ages of 15 suffering from it. And I was like, something me right here. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something me right. So after I saw that, I was like, uh-uh-uh. We need to get behemoths to that level. Now, why? For something, I don't know. There is a divine spark within everyone that inspires them to do something that's good for the people that they're surrounding. You know, just like how you had Moses. I don't know if it was something he did. He came back with the tablets or something. Then you had, um, you know, Yeshua. Uh, he wanted to restore his people. And then you have me. I want to restore my people. It's just that within my experience, I was divinely inspired to say, hey, you, if there's anyone who's going to be one of the game changers when it comes to the elevation of the Bahamian spirit, it's going to be you. I can look around and be like, okay, see, this guy did this thing. This guy ain't do nothing. But what, I, what am I going to do? So this is my contribution to the Bahamian public at large. So, like we say, the first problem with most Bahamians was the health aspect. Because we realize that health is so important in that without good health, you can't enjoy nothing. Anything. I don't care how much money you get. Because I've seen this over and over because my, some of my clients, they would have lots of money, wealthy, multiple rental places and tenants and businesses. And, but then they would be unhealthy. Going to get treatment and surgeries over and over. I'm like, this don't make sense, but something, something me right. And you, I always say that, but your health is your wealth because you know how good it feels that like when you wake up in the morning, you, you're literally cognitive and you're, you're literally here. You're not thinking about the problems your body has. Your body doesn't give you any signals. Hey, this is a problem. You can really be present and you can really, really have better relationships with everyone that you interact with. So that was one of the reasons why I wrote this book. I wanted to improve the health of behaviors. What's the second, re second reason why I wrote this book? The second reason I wrote this book is because I saw the second problem was in the Bahamian uh, populace is that many Bahamians didn't own businesses. 
many Bahamians didn't own businesses. Okay, and when I say that is that yes, there were a certain amount of people who owned businesses, but they weren't doing it right. Now you may say there's no right way or wrong way to do business. I disagree. There's a right way to do anything. All right, there's a right way to talk to people. There's a right way to get what you want. You know, when you do it the wrong way, you end up causing yourself problems in the long run. Perfect example. You start a business, all right, and you do not focus on a small variety of things. You expand yourself so big, you, tr you, you, you attempt to cater to everybody. And guess what happens? Different sectors of your businesses fail. It's because, you know, if you read books, you've heard of the rule called the 80-20 rule, meaning that 80% of your results come from 20% of your products. So that's why you have to become a specialist. You have to become a specialist which specializes because every arena of business has a river. And when we say river, it means that waters flow deep, meaning that, for instance, my field as a locksman, I have so many problems that have to be solved within that arena. And if I expand it too far, I won't be able to solve the problems the way I should. And I won't be able to invest money the way I should. Also, too, the second aspect of that is business continuity. There are many people who start businesses, right, but they do not properly breed their heirs, which is their children, to run those businesses so that the wealth can be transferred from one to the next and making it easier for the continuing generation of wealth. Okay, so that's two things we just addressed. Health, we saw the declining uh, health of behaviors because why? Obese, older shape, communicable disease that could be easily avoided, and also to 80% of the population obese, come on man, but third or second in the world, that doesn't make sense. Small population, 400,000, beautiful islands, island nature, come on, right? That was the second reason. So the third reason was because we saw that the, there was a decline in the relationship structure or family structure in the Bahamas because you see that it's a healthy behavior way, business, health, relationship, blueprint. So with the relationship, I saw that a lot of the relationships weren't conducive for children to be reared, reared and raised so that they could be at the high level to, number one, continue good health, number two, continue the family businesses, and number three, have excellent relationships because they see an example. So in this book, we talk about business, health, and relationship. We give you a blueprint on how to do it a better way. Maybe, maybe the best way. <laughs> it all depends on, on, on your level of growth. So right now, what I'm going to do is I want to read to you an uh, uh, excerpt from this book. And we want to focus on the part that talks about generational wealth, right? So we're flipping through the pages right now. And, and the pages that we see, okay, that's health. Okay. The pages that we see, just give me one moment. We're in the optimum families portion. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to read to you an excerpt. I'm going to read from page 44, which is called, it said, Creating Wealth Business Blueprint, right? And this is going to be fantastic for all, anyone who's interested in being a business entrepreneur. I'm going to start from page 44. We're going to read from 40, 44, 45, 46, 47. We're going to read the three pages, okay? Yeah, we're going to read the, from 44 to 48. And then you have to read the rest when you get a chance. So, creating wealth business blueprint. So, you want to be wealthy, huh? What does it take? Well, let's start with the terminology of what wealth is. Wealth, referred by Google, definition one, abundance of valuable possessions or money. Definition two, a plentiful supply of a particular desirable thing. And definition three, the ability to fully experience life. Okay, we can conclude that wealth is having more than enough of something valuable, which is desired, that allows life to be fully experienced. So, what we behemoths simply need to do is create lots of value. How do we do this? Start a business. 
Let me tell you a story about Barry. Barry was a top performer at a security company and made them lots of money and started alarms. One day, he did so exceptionally well on a service call, the client paid the bill and sent a check for Barry and his co-worker. The sad part was that Barry and his co-worker never received the gift from the client. And when he found out, he was furious and left the company. Barry wanted better for himself and his wife and soon to be second son coming on the way. So he invested in a course. He ventured from just alarms to locksmithing. After completing the course, he soon started acquiring clients. He began to build his own brand in locksmithing, one customer at a time. After 25 years of consistently burning the midnight oil, working diligently, he arrived at a point where clients knew him well enough until he didn't even have to advertise. He was passionate about building a business that he could pass on to his sons while they were young. His sons would accompany him on service calls, learning directly from daddy. Barry's wife worked in a clothing store that would stir up her allergies, having her frequent the asthma bay. He decided that after those consistent chain of events, that it would be better for her to work for him in a dust-free environment and help accelerate the family business. Barry's next move was to go from renting to buying a piece of property. He saved up all his revenue from his mobile locksmithing business until he came across a piece of land that was ideal. He went to the bank and purchased the property and built a tiny house on it. It doubled as his shop and his dwelling quarters. The people at church would make fun of his tiny house, stating, look at this little chicken coop. But Barry had the vision in his mind of what was to come that they could not see. As the months went by, Barry would add on piece by piece, rather his small shop with his wife, going on service calls, planning and executing day and night. Five years later, Barry now had two tenants, his shop, a separate dwelling quarters, and a lucrative business. Time flew by and he hired his youngest brother to work for him. As the business improved, he taught him the skills and his young brother began to become proficient in the field. His younger son came out of school and took the business to the next level. Barry no longer had to do all the work himself and now has helping hands. Barry can now focus on the management of the business while his son and brother handles the big jobs. Able Lock & Key is now a successful second generation business serving the needs of the community. Moral of the story, wealth is created by what you establish. Now, you'll enjoy that story. That story is our story. Yes, A1 Lock & Key. I'm proud to be a participant, an owner of a second generation business. Now you heard